Greetings everyone and welcome to another video and today this video is going up roughly about 24 hours before we will be starting the 5th anniversary live event over on Twitch where we will be restreaming and checking out all the news of course yes as always I will do my recap stream video that will be uploaded shortly after as quickly as possible remember with the anniversary streams there's usually quite a bit of information to pile through give opinions about and all of that so it will be quite lengthy so will the live stream incidentally but we'll see how it goes this year there is always going to be the ups and downs the things people love and the things people hate and everything in between. We have collaborations to look forward to. We have so many things that are about to happen. So, as always at this time of year, before we get into it, we gotta do some predictions. So here are my predictions for 2025's Woda season, the fifth year of Woda, half a decade as it would be. And I'm not doing anything super special this year because it feels not necessarily earned at this point. I personally, as a content creator, have been really disappointed in the lack of live streams this year. It's just been less fun, less community building, and, well, less content for me to create and build around. So not only that, with less content creators around, potentially going to other games, which is totally fine. It's been a bit of a rough year, so I'm hoping that this fifth anniversary will mark a return to form, but I'm not holding out the highest hopes for it. So let's get the most obvious talking point out of the way, the collaboration. And before anybody gets their hopes up, I mean, yes, please, by all means, throw your ideas in the comments below what you really want. But I'm here to talk realistically, and realistically, it's not going to be an outside collaboration. It is absolutely not, 100%. The outside collaboration always happens around New Year's, and that is not here. The, live, the collaboration that we get right now will be a Final Fantasy collaboration. It will be going basically up until the end of this year, and then right near the end, uh, right before New Year's, that's when the outside collaboration will happen. You know, it's been uh, near. it's been uh, Persona, it's been Dragon, not Dragon Quest, sorry, but you, you get the idea. There is a lot to draw on there. This is going to be a Final Fantasy collaboration, absolutely, at anniversary time. And what is it going to be this year? Well, I think it's about time that we finally skipped 7 and got past 7. This is starting to feel a little bit like Ever Crisis 2 in just the fact that well, we get a major collaboration and anniversary. It's in Final Fantasy VII lately. D don't. Don't do it. Advent Children was too much last year, and we just don't need it. If you want to do FF7 as a, you know, happens at the same time, and then give those characters upgrades, sure, why not? You should do it for other Final Fantasies. Fun. I'm not going to nitpick that much. This year, I think we really need a different Final Fantasy and a very popular Final Fantasy. So my picks for this year are two, in fact, and I'm going to say the one that I think is most likely to happen <clears throat> and the one that I want to happen. So the two, starting with the one that I think is actually going to happen, will be Final Fantasy 16. 16 is still relatively new and fairly popular as well as a bunch of goodwill. It also has a lot going for it in the sense that FFBE got it this year as an actual gotcha collaboration, which is quite huge because 14 just wasn't that. 14 was not a gotcha collaboration really at the start of the game. But I think that 16, having been an FFBE collaboration, is the one that is most likely to happen. It's quite it's still fairly popular a lot of people still look on it you know fairly fondly i think you know it as an rpg yes it has its weak points but it's really good the artwork is really good the characters are really 
good for almost uniformly across the board. So if you were to take a collaboration like that and go with, I'm just going to say the three obvious ones off of my Final Fantasy 16 death mat. I mean, it's really just about, uh, I, I think, I don't think we're going to see any villains in this collaboration. I think the most likely ones to happen would be, of course, Clive, because you can't have that not happen for a 16. That would be insanity. But also Jill potentially being the free character. But if they really want to earn a bunch of goodwill with the community, I would say make Sid the free character because so many people love Sid. There's a lot of criticism that can be lobbed at Final Fantasy 16. Some of it's earned, some of it's not. Some of it should be probably a little more nice. After all, nothing helps a Final Fantasy better with the community than time, where as other Final Fantasy, newer Final Fantasies come out, oh, those are the ones that get hate and people look more fondly of on the old ones. Seriously, 16 will eventually be looked on as, yeah, it's not a game that I particularly like doing the side quest, but the main quest is pretty fun and the overall gameplay play loop is pretty good. You know, except for people who suck at action games. Uh, yeah, I, I think that that would be perfectly reasonable. Now, to compare FFBE, on the other hand, had four characters. It had Clive, Jill, Sid, and Benedicta. And that's still pretty reasonable to me. I mean, it's pretty face up on the table as to what elements they would be. Fire, ice, lightning, and wind. There isn't really any surprise there at all. But that's a pretty good spread of elements. I think that for these anniversaries, if you're going to introduce a new Final Fantasy, it should be four characters. And I'm just going to say that I think that's really good with the potential ...ness of just the second part of the collaboration. You know, you have Joshua, you have Dion, uh, of course, you know, Titans, um, for whatever reason, uh, his name is just escaping me. I, I, Hugo, Hugo, Hugo. He, he, I love that character. He's one of the best characters to me in Final Fantasy 16. He's actually borderline should have been pushed up to being a main villain somehow if I would have changed a few things. But we could get into 16 commentary on a different video. And Barnabas as well. Uh, there's just eight characters. They're perfectly spread across different elements here, uh, except for, I guess, two fires. Uh, we don't really have a water character, so. Uh, well, actually, uh, let's not get into it. But, so yeah, I, I think that 16 is the most likely collaboration to happen because it just makes sense <clears throat> from a business perspective and timing-wise. It's, it's not that far out, so I'm going to say that. However, with that being said, Final Fantasy XII is going to be my dark horse choice for this one because XII is and isn't really popular, and it does feel like it's kind of been a Final Fantasy that people have been asking for a while. It could also generally be conceived as being partially tactic, since, you know, tactics uh, is Ivalice and Final Fantasy XII is Ivalice. So let's meet right in the middle there. In terms of characters, though, I think it's very obvious for me. Balthier would absolutely have to be in. Uh, there's no way that he could not. Fran would also be in because you got to get those people pulling hard, if you would. And then I think, you know what? Gabranth would be my third choice just as a actual villain. I think he's pretty like he's just so popular that you could do it. And here is my sacrilegious thing that I'm going to say. It's not Ban, but Bosch von Ransenberg. On Ronsenberg of Del Masca. Don't believe Andor's lies. I actually think it would be totally fine for 12 uh, as a collaboration to just kick Van to the curb for a while and do the obvious thing that would sell way more. Balthier, Fran, Bosch, as well as uh, Gabranth seems like an absolutely amazing collaboration. I mean, even if you don't like 12, there's one of those characters would probably be quite tempting to most people. In terms of who they would be, uh, Gabranth, I would pick for dark. I would put Bosch as light 
just as an actual counter as being like, you know, to me, with the actual way they are in the story, they kind of oppose each other quite well. So putting them as light and dark seems pretty natural for me. As for Balthier and Fran, I would absolutely love it if they would be kind of partner elements. We've seen these with um, 90 cost VCs a lot, where you have, uh, what do I even say? Like, you have it so that, like, lightning and wind go really well together, or ice and water. I mean, personally, I would pick Balthier for water. That doesn't fit into the current elemental cycle, but I'm just going to go out on a limb and say, I don't care, and I don't think the devs do either, as we've gotten a lot of water and thunder characters lately. So Balthier, to me, as water, because, to me, he connects to Famfrit, uh, one of the espers from Final Fantasy XII, and Fran then being ice, ice ranged, has a pretty big history uh, together as element and damage type. I think that would be perfectly acceptable together to have Balthier and Fran being partner-ish characters, sh almost sharing an element, whereas Bosch and Gabranth being opposed to each other from light and dark. Either way, I'm kind of betting this year on four characters because I think they kind of got to do something major to really, really push the game out. Uh, of course, that's not all. Uh, so that's my collaboration predictions. I know I went on for a bit, but I do want to be detailed so that we can look back on it later and see if I was right. So now, Let's switch to the other discussion topic, which is about gameplay stuff. Now, honestly, I've thought long and hard about the fourth anniversary and what event was particularly well received. And the only thing I could kind of come up with was the old story event with like young Helena and young old and young Moraga. That's the only thing that I can think of because that the story is still incredibly well received and story events are very well received. So my I guess is that we're going to see some major connection with that and young characters in the for, for this anniversary. I mean honestly the outside bet to me is that we're going to see something major to do with the Veritas units. I mean all of the Veritas units at this point are used towards getting dark Veritas which means that there is probably a much bigger plan. I mean, there's this, we've been essentially, players have been working across an entire year to build up the Veritas units. It would be nice to have something to actually do with them. Whether that's another story would be quite neat. Now, my wildest prediction would be that it is a combination of these two ideas of the Veritas's and the idea of the younger character story events to that which we would see a character story event of the Veritas units in another story style where we are actually playing through and seeing the story of the Veritas units back when uh, very early Wotav world because they've been around so long kind of thing potentially even before the rings maybe it has something to do with the forging of the rings I'm not making a Lord of the Rings joke, I'm just not doing it. But to me, that's the only thing that kind of makes logical sense because I just, I, I can't even imagine that they are floating the idea that Reserve was very well received. It's caused so many problems and pissed so many people off that I just can't see that's it. I also can't see a few other things being particularly whatever the hell they're talking about. So I am curious, I am going to be very excited to see what this is because at this point I just not a hundred percent sure and that actually makes me unhappy. Uh, now from there this year we're not going to see vision card upgrades uh, at all. Hollow vision cards I think have hit the sweet point for Woda devs where they're not selling them, we're not able to use stars, everybody people are kind of upset about it but nobody's really like pitchforked anything yet so to me that means that it's probably okay to just keep going as it is 
I mean, maybe they do something where they actually allow Vision Stars to work for Hollow Vision cards now, but I just don't see it happening. I mean, the most thing, the most common thing I think that we see is something along the lines of what they just started, which was, hey, check out this Vision card that you can get for this price at um, like level 99. To me, this is so tempting for for people to get for whales especially like it's just essentially a credit card payment as opposed to an rng chance I, I i'm gonna go so far as to say that i think this is probably something that they will look at doing more especially for story vcs not limited time vcs but story vcs okay so that is that and then as for other things i mean there can be a ton of other weird things modes or content that could be announced but i'm not holding out for that because i just don't have super big hope and let's just leave it as a pleasant surprise what i think is going to be the big thing this year is uh, the unit upgrade the unit upgrade i i don't think it will be too far out of left or right field uh i, I think it's just going to be a, a really on the nose here is something that is brand new. And to me, I, I thought about it a lot. Like there's a bunch of common popular ideas that we can just take from FFB. And if it's something entirely random and out there and from like the alchemist code or something like that, then I'm not going to consider that in my predictions. I'm actually going through FFB and to me, like I looked at super trust masteries, I looked at like level 160s and I think the most common thing is probably going to be Neo Visions. Because Neo Visions actually makes a ton of sense right now in the game. As negatively as it would be to be like, well, there's this new power level of character, you can't exactly not have a new power level forever. And if you think about it, short of like characters this year getting a power boost from just being generally stronger. For the most part, power level, we didn't see any giant leaps for over a year. So it might be time. Also, the summon pool is way too overcrowded, way too busy, and rainbows just don't feel as special anymore. Like, they're just too hard to get something new off of, and I think player discontent is probably quite low. And the problem isn't exactly whales, because whales are just buying characters. They're not really gotcha most times. They will just flat out buy a character if they want a character. And Woda seems to be doing okay on that front. I think that the introduction of a new character tier and allowing rainbows to become like a 10% crystal as opposed to a 2% crystal would be good it would allow people it would give a period of time where people would just essentially be doing that um there would be of course an upgrade path for older characters which would probably need more shards and fine you gotta keep people doing something but the new crystals would go down to a two percent rate and would be stronger potentially having things such as leadership skills which would power up other characters to kind of make it so that you would want these new things because we have to want them At the end of the day as well doesn't shouldn't need to be reminded but i will say it this is a business it's not a charity and they are definitely trying to sell us a product so i guess do your best and just hope that it's good value i think that they will probably still sell characters to whales but probably at a slightly higher price and we'll just kind of start a little bit fresh, but you know, with that overlap time of something new coming out and the content being old and a 2% rate of getting one of these things, well, probably you can get one, score, you know, do some, finish off some older content and then just kind of keep going, which would be good enough. It, it's been proven to work in the past and keep players generally okay with it. I mean, I don't think that when you're announcing like a power spike, a new thing to achieve that you can ever get around players just being generally unhappy because you're 
you know, devaluing the stuff that they already have a lot of the times, even if it technically isn't. Yeah, I, I, I personally think that it's going to be Neo Visions. We're going to get a new color of book, maybe purple or something like that, with those red sparkly crystals that you see in FFBE. It just seems to fit probably with where the game's life is. Of course, you know, it is Gumi. They might have something entirely different in mind. So we'll have to wait and see. But those are my predictions for the fifth anniversary uh, as such as it is. Now, of course, join me tomorrow as we take a peek at what the future holds for Wotive over on Twitch, of course. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. See you later.